This video is sponsored by Squarespace. More on that later in the video. Sourdough butter experiment. Today I'm going to see what putting butter in your dough does to your sourdough bread. Mmm, butter. <laughs> Hi, I'm Sune, and I'm a food geek. A while back I did an experiment to see what difference it made to put olive oil in the dough of your sourdough bread. That video is linked in the card above. A lot of you asked to repeat the experiment but with butter, so that's what we're doing today. But instead of varying the amount of butter in the dough, I'm doing a control, then I'm doing one where melted butter is added with everything else in the beginning, and one where the butter is kneaded in after the window pane succeeds. Conventional wisdom tells us that butter will impede the gluten development because the particles in the flour are covered in fat. It'll be interesting to see if that's true or just another myth to bust. So generally, we'll see what it does to the handling of the dough, the shaping, the baking, the crust, the crumb, you know, everything. Squarespace is a platform that lets you easily build your own presence on the web. Maybe you want to build a blog for all your sourdough recipes, or maybe you're launching your own micro bakery. You get almost unlimited options in how your sites should work. There's blogging features built in to share recipes, photos, and videos. You can categorize, share, and schedule your posts to make your content work for you. Squarespace has modern templates for almost any subject and they look sleek and professional no matter what device your users use, be it on Windows, Mac, or mobile phone or tablet. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com foodgeek to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So the dough is my standard experiment dough. 80% bread flour, 20% rye flour, 80% hydration, 2% salt, and 20% inoculation. I used my bread calculator to get the hydration the same because there's some water in the butter. I guess you could argue that the butter kneaded into the dough wouldn't contribute to the overall hydration, but I will assume that they're the same. If the kneaded dough is shown to be stiffer, then I guess the water in the butter shouldn't be taken into account, but I guess we'll see. That's sort of a side experiment. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider becoming a Patreon. You can also buy some merch or use the links in the description for tools and ingredients. Thank you. Those were the words. This is the experiment. The formula for the bread in this video is linked in the description. First I mix everything for the control and make sure that all of the flour is hydrated. Then I mix the dough for the one with the melted butter. Then I mix the dough where I will knead the butter in later. Obviously it's a bit thicker now because it assumes the hydration from the butter later. Then I leave all three doughs to rest for an hour. Then I proceed to do the first set of stretch and folds. This is looking great, already a great start. Well, 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 the gluten is a bit behind on this one.
The gluten is great on this one, but a bit stiffer. Then they all rest for 30 minutes. This is already starting to look nice. I guess half an hour was all it took. This one is far along already. Then another 30 minutes rest. Let's have a look at the gluten. Awesome. I put it in the bulking container. While this one looked more ragged at the beginning, it looks like the control now. So off to the bulking container. This one looks good too, and gluten is on par, so it's time to knead in the butter. As you can see, it seems a lot wetter now. Off to bulking it goes. I let them all grow to 25% and they were all done at the same time. So it's time to pre-shape the dough. First the control. It's looking really nice. It's really ready. Then the melted butter dough. It's a great looking dough. It's really holding together. Then the kneaded butter. While it looked very ragged when I put it down for the rice, it's now really nicely developed. All of the three doughs rest 20 minutes on the counter. Then it's time for final shaping.
I put them in the fridge for about 8 hours to retard and then it's time to bake. About 1 hour before I heat my oven to 260 degrees Celsius, 500 degrees Fahrenheit with my Dutch oven inside. Then I grab my dough for the control from the fridge. I flip it. I dust it. <laughs> Check out the lamb that I 3D printed. I score it. And then I bake it. After 20 minutes, I take the lid off and turn down the oven to 230 degrees Celsius, 450 degrees Fahrenheit. And after about 20 minutes more, the bread is done. Wow, that's some nice spring there. Then it's time to bake the bread with the melted butter. I flip it. This dough is super stiff, so obviously the butter solidified in the dough. I dust it. I score it. And then I bake it. Not bad at all. And then the one with the butter kneaded in. Obviously a bit lighter in color. Interesting. Let's have a look at the crumb. First the control. Very nice open crumb. Then the one with the melted butter. Very easy to cut. Great crumb too. And then the one with the butter kneaded in, very soft. Really nice crumb. They look pretty similar. And here's a comparison for y'all. <laughs> Let's do a sniff and taste test. Mmm, sourdough bread as I know and love it. Ooh, the smell of butter from the crumb is distinctive. Wow, the crust on this one smells like brown butter. Mmm, tastes great have a look at this. Both of the butter breads have a bit of a very tight doughy thing going on at the bottom. I wonder what cost this. Any ideas? Well, let's taste. Mmm, delicious and soft. Oh my. The crust has an absolutely delicious caramelized butter taste. And a little bit of a softness test here. Look how much more rigid the control is compared to the other two. Okay, so that's interesting. It didn't really seem to make any difference if you put the melted butter in in the beginning or you knead it in later. At least when it comes to gluten development and working with the dough. Also hydration wise, they seemed very similar. It did however seem to make a difference in the taste. You could taste browned butter in the crust of the bread where it was kneaded in, where the other bread mostly had a smell of butter coming off from the crumb. It may be interesting to see what difference it would make when making an actual brioche. Would you be interested in me doing a comparison of melted butter versus kneaded butter in brioche? Let me know in the comments. Otherwise, honestly, the smell of butter coming off from these loaves were mouth-watering. 
And like the oil experiments also showed, that fat will significantly soften the crust and the crumb. That also means impeded oven spring. I hope you learned something today. See you next time.